A huge amount of data is being collected on the orca interactions with yachts by the Cruising Association. They have a large database which has yielded some interesting statistics and based on some of this information, the Cruising Association has been offering advice to yachtsmen on how best to avoid interactions and if one does occur, how best to protect your yacht whilst, most importantly, not harming these beautiful marine mammals. The damage to yachts is of concern. Not only is it expensive, but some of the interactions are really scaring people, and the worry is that at some point a human will get hurt, if only from a bump to the yacht, causing someone to fall and injure themselves. And then the dynamics of the situation will change, with people becoming more aggressive towards these magnificent creatures. Orcas will not eat humans, as some people are worried about. There is no known case of a wild orca ever attacking a homo sapien, and these orcas are fish eaters anyway, not mammal eating like other populations. In the extreme cases where the crew have had to abandon their yacht as it was sinking, the orcas simply lost interest and disappeared. Their toy had broken. They were not at all interested in the people in the boat. With interactions increasing and concern growing amongst the sailing community, the Cruising Association has taken up the challenge of collating reports to analyse data and then give advice to sailors on how to reduce the risk of an interaction and damage to the yacht. They have a website where you can report incidents and are urging sailors to do this. The website has all kinds of interesting data on it. As far as I can tell, it has been collecting data since April 2022 so it is missing the older data, but nonetheless, it is yielding a wealth of useful information. Over the years that this has been happening, all the interactions have been with yachts, except for one fishing vessel and two motorboats. If you go to the comparative data, where all the data that has been entered into the database is analysed, you can see that 29.6% of boats were not damaged, 7.7% had some minor damage, which could wait until the end of the season to be fixed. 26.1% had extensive damage and major works were needed. And 36.6% had moderate damage and immediate repairs were needed. 31% of the boats required a tow into the nearest port. 96.5% of boats had an uneventful journey off the Iberian coast. And of them, 3.5% had seen orcas. The problem with this number is that not all the boats that have had an uneventful journey enter this data onto the database, and the Cruising Association is trying to raise awareness of the existence of it, so if you are a sailor, please spread the word. They would like to have the data to be able to work out what percentage of boats are having interactions. At the moment, they can only estimate that the orcas interact with 1% of boats that sail along the coast which is actually pretty low, and just goes to show how much boat traffic there is in this area. The Cruising Association has formed a collaboration with a group of Spanish and Portuguese scientists who have been studying the behaviour of the orcas for some years. I'm not even going to attempt to try to pronounce their name, but they are referred to as the GTOA. Using the data collected, the Cruising Association and the GTOA are trying to identify factors which may reduce the risk of an interaction, and also identify which actions taken by a skipper during an interaction are effective and which are not, and so produce advice on mitigation strategies. Other interesting data on the website includes how long the yacht was, whether it was motoring, sailing or motor sailing, how fast it was going, the depth of water, the type of rudder, and the colour of the anti-fouling paint. The orcas did prefer slightly larger yachts, whether it was sailing or using a motor or both did not seem to matter to them. The orcas did, however, like the yacht to be going at 5 to 7 knots, with 73.5% of interactions occurring at this speed. The orcas preferred a depth of water greater than 20 metres, black anti-fouling paint and a spade rudder. I don't want to bore you with too many statistics, but do have a look at their website if you are interested. Some yachtsmen have reported that reversing the yacht may have some effect in deterring the orcas. By February 2023, 29 skippers had reported reversing during an interaction. Of those, 16 reported success and 11 reported failure in deterring the interaction, so not a huge difference. 
However, there are laws protecting orcas and certain authorities have decreed that reversing in the presence of orcas is illegal, so it is not an advisable method, especially given its limited success. Some skippers have used deterrent pingers. These are a type of acoustic deterrent device that emits sound at various audio frequencies to alert marine mammals of fishing gear. It is, however, illegal to use one without a license and the few that have reported the use of them to the Cruising Association have not had any success in deterring the orcas. Making loud noises, such as banging pots and pans on the stern rail, has had limited success in deterring interactions. There is evidence that some yachts have used underwater firecrackers to try to deter the orcas. This practice is illegal off the Iberian coast. In all, there have been nine reports of yachts using noise as a deterrent. Five succeeded and four failed. In fact, it is thought that making a noise might actually extend the interest of the orcas. As the orcas on occasions have actually been interested in the reaction of the humans, it is advisable to make as little noise as possible and remain invisible to minimise the interest level to the orcas. In fact, behavioural scientists who have studied orcas in captivity have advised that orcas have enjoyed eliciting a response. They will hide from their keepers beneath an overhang in their aquarium, only to splash them when they peer over to look for the orcas. The other thing for yachtsmen to remember is that in Spanish waters there is a royal decree from 2007 which does not permit the production of loud and shrill noises and sounds to get closer or further away from orcas. It also states that you are not allowed to throw food, drink, rubbish or any other solid or liquid substance that could harm them. So people who have been pouring substances such as bleach, diesel and anything else into the water in a bid to deter the orcas are actually breaking the law. And it doesn't work anyway. It gets too diluted in the water to have any effect. Another noteworthy finding is that 50% of the yachts that had incidents had black anti-fouling paint. Whereas the trouble-free voyages, only 25% of the yachts had black anti-fouling paint. The data suggests that if you have black anti-fouling, you are doubling the risk of an incident, but more data needs collecting on this. As was the case with echo sounders, it was first thought that the echo sounder might be attracting the orcas, so advice was given to turn them off, but orcas were still interacting with yachts, even when it was turned off. In April of this year, a skipper spread 5 to 8 kilograms of sand in front of the rudder, which very quickly deterred the interaction. This sounds promising, but obviously more data needs to be collected. How the sand works is that it varies the density of the water, causing an acoustic mirror effect, effectively hiding the rudder from the orca's sonar. As this is what they are particularly interested in, it seems a great idea, and it's not harmful to the orcas. Work is also being done this summer to develop an acoustic device that will hopefully deter the orcas. In the meantime, the GTOA have developed an app. You can access it from their website, which help yachtsmen plan their journey. It displays recent orca interactions and reported sightings and enables you to report an interaction or sighting quickly and easily. The Cruising Association would like skippers to submit location reports using this app as soon as possible and then submit a more detailed report to the Cruising Association when time permits. On the GTOA website, there is a map with traffic lights on it. It shows where orca interactions are most likely to occur. For example, as the orcas are waiting around the Strait of Gibraltar for the tuna to leave the Mediterranean, that area has a red light, so best to avoid it at the moment. So from the current data, the best advice to avoid an interaction is to stay in shallow water, be less than two miles offshore, which has its own challenges, and travel quickly and perhaps think about travelling in convoy. If an interaction starts, then you can try making a sudden loud noise or reverse and try pouring sand between the orca and the rudder. If sea conditions allow, then it is best to slow down and stop the engine, turn off the autopilot and leave the rudder to track. This will prevent injury to the skipper and hopefully the orcas will lose interest in their toy. My own interactions with orcas have always been very positive but I can appreciate just how scary having orcas bumping your yacht and biting the rudder could be. I urge people not to start harming these beautiful, intelligent mammals. They are remarkable creatures, and this particular group of orcas are endangered. 
We have invaded their environment as if we own it. We pollute their home with plastics, toxins and noise, steal their food, and in other parts of the world have forcibly taken their young and incarcerated them in concrete tanks. They have put up with a lot. People are working on a solution to this problem and one will be found which will not harm the orcas or they will grow bored of this particular game and find another. In the meantime, if I was lucky enough to have a yacht to sail, I would be looking at the traffic light map and avoiding the area that the orcas are in, which means at the moment staying away from the Strait of Gibraltar until the tuna come out of the Mediterranean and head west and north with the orcas in hot pursuit. I have recently added to my featured channels a YouTube channel which is dedicated to orcas and has some interesting videos sharing interviews with orca experts. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends. And don't forget to put your notifications on.